who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Friends, Scripture reminds us that God knows our thoughts before we give them voice. We also know God is compassionate. God knows our pain and sorrow, joys and fears before we give them voice. God is just, offering mercy while we cringe, expecting judgment and punishment. But in spite of our weakness, our failures, our doubts and our fears, we are invited to name and claim God's love and care for us. Thanks be to God. Guide me, O the great Jehovah, pilgrim through this barren land. I am weak, but thou art mighty, Hold me with thy powerful hand. Bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I want no more. Open now the crystal fountain whence the healing stream doth flow. Let the fire and cloudy pillar lead me all my journey through. Strong deliverer, strong deliverer, be thou still my strength and shield. Be thou still my strength and shield. When I tread the verge of Jordan, bid my anxious fears subside. Death of death and hell's destruction, land me safe on Canaan's side. Songs of praises, songs of praises, I will ever give to thee. Our scripture reading uh, this morning is from Philippians 2, verses 1 through 11. The author writes, If then there is any encouragement in Christ, any consolation from love, any sharing in the Spirit, any compassion and sympathy, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to their own interests, but to the interests of others. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. <clears throat> Please.
Please pray with me a prayer by biblical scholar William Barclay. Loving God, we give thanks for those who mean so much to us. Those whom we can go to anytime, those with whom we can talk and keep nothing back, knowing they will not laugh at our dreams or our failures. Those in whose presence it is easier to be good. Those who by their warnings have held us back from mistakes we might have made. And above all, we thank you for Jesus Christ, Lord of our hearts and Savior of our souls. Grant us steadfast hearts where no unworthy thought can drag downward, unconquered hearts which no tribulation can wear out, upright hearts where no unworthy purpose may tempt aside. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture reading for our sermon today is Psalm 106, 1 to 3. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty doings of the Lord or declare all his praise? Happy are those who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Our sermon this morning, based on that scripture, is, Do you see my bumper sticker? I recently saw something I had not seen since I lived in Iowa. It was a tattered bumper sticker on the back of an old pickup truck that said, No farmers, no food. Support family farms. You know, every day you and I see a variety of bumper stickers from the crazy to the sane, from the serious to the funny, from clean to the dirty, and all of them are expressions of the current feeling of the driver of the car. And in this election year, bumper stickers will proliferate as people express their political choices. So what does your bumper sticker say? Last week, I saw one that very simply proclaimed, praise the Lord. You know, there could be no better bumper sticker for any of us to use than praise the Lord. Our Bible is full of that expression, especially in the Psalms. And our scripture reading this morning reminds us to praise the Lord by giving thanks for God's goodness and enduring love. Maybe you aren't the bumper sticker kind. But as a member or person who attends this church, there are people who read you and me and our church just as surely as they read the bumper sticker on a vehicle. So what does your bumper sticker say? Well, a Christian bumper sticker should say, praise the Lord. I believe it must also have four words as a reminder of what it means to be a Christian who follows Jesus Christ our Lord. Generosity is the first word. You know, the heart of the Christian should be the first to share in grief and pain, sorrow and heartache of life, by extending itself in help. In his book, The Bible and Modern Medicine, Dr. A. Rendell Short points that the Christian church has always been in the forefront of all the work to alleviate pain and suffering in this world. Did you know that the first blind asylum was founded by a Christian monk? The first free dispensary was founded by Apollonius, 
a Christian merchant. The first hospital on record was founded by a Christian woman named Fabula. Before the Christian church existed, the Romans did little and cured little for the pain and suffering in the world except to ignore it. Indeed, illness and suffering was seen by many as a sign of displeasure from the gods. So the emphasis of the early church to care for the widows and orphans and those in need was revolutionary for its time. The story is told of a crowd watching a merchant's cart being wrecked by an unruly mob. This destroyed his means of livelihood in the early history of our country. There were some words of sympathy from the crowd for the carter and his loss. And then an old Quaker stepped forward and said, I'm sorry for what happened two dollars worth, and handed it to the carter. Then turning to the crowd, he said, Friends, how much art thou sorry? You know, he understood the Christian faith. James reminds us if a brother or sister is ill-clad and lacking of daily food, and one of you says, go in peace, be warm and filled without giving them the things needed for the body, what good does it do? Faith without works is dead. Sympathy without generosity is not sympathy, it's hypocrisy. Praise the Lord for generous people who have shared with us in our time of need, for in so doing they were Christ to us. The second word for our bumper sticker is forgiveness. In worship services across this land, many will pray, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. But then... They'll take with them the grudges and resentments they brought to worship with them. Don't be like the husband and wife who had a quarrel. He said to her, I thought you'd agreed to forgive and forget. She replied, yes, I did. But I don't want you to forget that I've, what I've forgiven and forgotten. In the Apostles' Creed, we affirm, I believe in the forgiveness of sins. That is your sins as well as mine. The good news of the gospel is that God makes possible new life for sinners like you and me. And the only way to new life is through forgiveness. This means the same God who gave us life and stands in judgment over our sin accepts us as we are, offering us a new life within God's total love. It wasn't until I was in seminary that I began to understand and accept that truth in my life. Now, friends, I'm not about to share with you some of the sins I've committed, but suffice it to say that I've done some things I'm not very proud of, and I sure don't want people to know about them. There was a time when I thought I would have to leave the seminary because of something I had done. Guilt was a force that caused me to be a caustic and resentful person. And in a small group one day, things got a little too close for comfort, as Fred pushed back against something I had said. Well, I lashed out at him, and he came right back at me, and it was a bit ugly for a while, and ended with Fred stalking out of the room. I felt like a heel. Well, the rest of the group left without saying a word, and to this day I can't tell you how Dr. Boffman and I wound up in his office. He listened and guided our conversation until he said to me, Marvin, you don't believe God forgives sin, do you? When I protested, he said, if you did, then you would accept that you are forgiven and move on. He was right. He helped me see that I was not allowing God's forgiveness to be complete by forgiving myself. Well, our group met again on Thursday, and one of the most difficult things that I've ever done was to
to ask that group to forgive me for what I'd done. And then asking Fred to forgive me was really hard. I learned forgiveness restores relationships. They may not be what they were before. That rupture may not ever be able to rub over, but, but they can be healed even though a scar remains. The Norwegian writer Johan Bohr in The Great Hunger tells of a man whose only child was killed by a neighbor's dog. Revenge would not do. But finally he found a better way. When a famine came to his came, his neighbor had no corn to plant. So the troubled father went out one night and planted his neighbor's field. He explained it this way later. I went and sowed seed in my enemy's field that God might exist. Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, pray Jesus, as he hung on the cross. May our bumper sticker contain the word forgiveness, which brings about reconciliation and healing. The third word for our bumper sticker is the word praise. Bishop James Thomas accompanied his wife Ruth to do a UMW program at the Lime Springs Church I was serving in Iowa back in the early 70s. Well, while the women were meeting, he and I spent some time together, and in conversation he said to me, You know, one of the problems of this job is that you hear all the gripes and few of the joys. You hear from the church dissatisfied with its preacher, and seldom do you hear from the church that is happy with its preacher. Well, I found that true as a district superintendent as well. But ever since our conversation, I've observed that many of us find it difficult to express appreciation to one another. If we're so quick to criticize, should we not also be quick to praise? Hans Christian Andersen in later life reflected, Blame stumps me. Praise encourages me and makes me cling to God. Abraham Lincoln once said, Everyone likes a compliment. Where did we ever get that mistaken notion that praise will give one the big head and you better get a brick? Why do we preface our compliments with comments about big heads and swell chest? They only serve to take away from the praise given. Have you ever been praised by someone for a job well done when you knew that you could have done and should have done better? You know, when someone who loves us praises us, it doesn't make us proud or vain, does it? It makes us humble and creates in us the desire to live up to the praise given. Jesus was an expert at praising other people and calling forth the best in them, even when they could not see it in themselves. Again and again and yet again, he affirmed the faith of other persons and invited them to a higher view of themselves than they had of themselves before. That's what the story of Jesus and Simon Peter who denied Jesus having a conversation on the seashore in John 21 is about. Jesus helped Peter move on from his denial three times by affirming him. Just think how much happiness we could sow in this world if we were more prone to praise than to criticism. Well, friends, the fourth and final word on our bumper sticker is gratitude. If you were to give one of your relatives a million dollars, you might expect him or her to be grateful. Andrew Carnegie won, gave one of his relatives a million dollars. Later, the man was heard cursing Carnegie. Why? Because the old fuddy-duddy had given $365 million to charities and had, in the words of the disgruntled relative, cut him off with only one measly million dollars. Go figure. 
Jesus told a story about a group of ten lepers who lived outside the village as outcasts. They asked Jesus for help, and he told them to go show themselves to the priest as they were healed on the way. Only one came back to thank Jesus who made this interesting observation. Where are the nine? You know, it's so easy to become upset because we did not get all we wanted and fail to be thankful for what we have. One of the ugliest sins is a lack of gratitude, the failure to say thanks for all the blessings we experience from others and from God. You and I don't want to spend much time with complainers and those who never express appreciation, do we? It's a miracle of love that God puts up with us who take so many blessings every day for granted and never think to thank God for them. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, said the psalmist. The way we give thanks is to live thanks by sharing what we've been given with others. May each of us be more conscious of our bumper sticker and the bumper sticker of this church. May four words of Christian endeavor and commitment always be seen in each of our lives and in the life of our church. That is, generosity, forgiveness, praise, and gratitude. Amen, and may God bless you. hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. His oath, his covenant, his blood Support me in the whelming flood When all around my soul gives way He then is on my hope and stay When he shall come with trumpet sound Oh, may I then in him be found Dressed in his righteousness alone Faultless to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, All other ground is sinking sand, All other ground is sinking sand. I invite you to hear, please, the benediction. And now may God bless you with confidence in living, hope in your relationships, and joy in exposing your bumper sticker. But above all, may you know peace in the core of your being as a sign and symbol of your faith. Amen. And let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be. With God our Creator, children all are we. Let us walk with each other. Oh, uh -huh.
perfect harmony. Let peace begin with me. Let this be the moment now. With every step I take, let this be my solemn vow. To take each moment and live each moment in peace eternal.